Hello all, in this particular tutorial we will learn how to do the step by step setup of IBM DB2 11.5.9 on Microsoft Windows 2019 failover cluster. This particular tutorial is recorded using VMware Workstation. Now, the software used for this particular tutorial is VMware Workstation Pro 17 Evaluation Edition, Windows 2019 Evaluation Edition, DB2 11.5.9 Developer Edition slash Community Edition. Now, these are the only three softwares that has been used for this particular tutorial. And <clears throat> the you, you don't need any other tutorial. You only need these three softwares to, to do this lab. If you have this particular three softwares, then you will be able to complete this particular lab. Now, remember one thing that I have the DB2 cluster is built on the Windows cluster. You need to set up the Windows cluster first and the DB2 cluster comes. You cannot set up the DB2 cluster without having the Windows cluster. I have already recorded another video where the DB2 cluster has been set up. So I'll paste the link of that particular video in the short description of this particular video. But that particular video will be the precursor to this particular. So you need to first do that and come here. And for the clarity, I'm going to explain how the cluster environment looks like. So what we have got is we have got a we have got a windows 2019 server which is which is acting as a domain controller a active directory and a file server then you have another server which is a node one or or server one this is where we will install the db2 database software and this this is the node two where we will install the db2 database software now this is where your domain controller plus file server so i'll be using the scuzzy protocol and um, you can you can use if you have nas sand storage or any other storage mechanism you can use that but probably most of the people may not have the nas or any other device to uh, set up the storage so what i've done is like using only these three softwares you don't need again i will mention using only these three softwares you should be able to set up your db2 cluster so you should be able to set up your db2 cluster using only these three softwares now the 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 cluster as i mentioned cluster has been created this is how the cluster looks like you need to first set up the db2 cluster now only thing that i have done only thing that i have done is i have after after that video is i have copied the db2 softwares on both of these nodes and i have installed db2 client on this now you don't need a client this is only for the testing purpose this is only for the testing purpose you don't need to install a client so if you have a application third part third application or you have any other software which you can connect to db2 database you can use that particular data software to connect to db2 database and you can use that so you don't need to set up the client but i just wanted to make sure that i do that and that is installation of the db2 client on here is totally optional now now that we have understood how the entire setup looks like the steps are pretty simple this is this is actually very easy to set up the to set up the microsoft failover cluster it is very very easy it's not really difficult so if you if I'll, I'll just exp I'll not go through all of these steps because we are going to do this, but I'll tell you what we need to do. So you must have done DB2 installation on Windows Server. You installed DB2 on both of the nodes, so node one and node two. So the node one and node two, you will install DB2. And when you install DB2, you install DB2 exactly the same way that you installed today. No difference at all, except for one thing. When you install the DB2, make sure that the db2 services are running on the domain account if you if you choose to install db2 as a local account then you have to again change at a later point in time to domain account it is always better to install db2 as a domain account service db2 services as a domain account while installing so this is the only change that we are going to do now also remember one thing in in windows world whenever you install db2 by default there will be one instance called db2 that gets created you can disable it and you can stop it again it's optional not mandatory but just because we want to run an ha why we want that extra instance so i will stop it i will disable that instance that's the only thing so you install db2 on both nodes as you would do normally except for the fact that choose domain account for db2 service that's the only thing so you don't have to worry about how to install is there a separate setting or anything 
there is no separate setting while you do this particular you install db2 as you normally do the next part you will create you will create a db2 resource or role you may not have heard of this but this particular db2 wolf i command will allow you to create a db2 resource so once you have installed the db2 you run this particular command and this will install the db2 role so that you can create a db2 cluster role in the failover cluster and then you will wherever you have a shared drive you will create a shared folder into that location and that particular shared folder is what will be used by the db2 to store the config or your database system and this shared file system will move to the node it will move to the it's like a disk it's like a separate disk and that disk will move where the db2 is running if the db2 is running on node 1 the shared file system will be on node 1 if db2 is running on node 2 the shared file system will be on node 2 it may will not be it is not a shared file system which means that it is a shared file system but it will not be present on both the nodes it will be connected to but both the nodes but only one node will mount the file system the other node will not mount the file system remember that particular point now we have already created a shared disk if you remember quorum disk and shared disk was configured in the previous node so i will use the same shared disk here as well the next part is <coughs> creating an instance so using the db2i create command you will create the instance and when you create the instance you will specify again the domain because you want to make sure that instance is running under the domain account so you will specify the domain account as and you will specify the instance name so here is the domain account here is the instance name db2 i create so and you can create the instance on any node so it doesn't matter where you create it but if you whatever you do on particular node you have to follow the steps so i have chosen the node one so i'll be creating the instance on node one verifying that instance has been created now this is very important so db2 i class command migrate this will allow us to promote this instance as a cluster instance till here it is a normal instance once you run this particular command this instance will become the clustered instance so on node one if we are saying cluster node as node one the name of the instance migrated as a cluster using db2 i class this is the shared location which we created here and how it get changed to this you will come to know and this is the domain account and then you will verify using the that the instance is part of the cluster using db2 i list now the on the now what you will do you will move, move the services to the second role move the role to the second node and here you will only do the db2 i class add you don't have to create the instance you don't have to create the instance on the second node remember this particular point here we use the migrate command here we use the add command then you will set some parameters like you know dbm service name parameters default db path these are all normal parameters that you normally do while you install db2 so there is nothing new here and this is the location where your shared file system is so this is this is the shared file system location so we are using that particular file system and we are going to verify that that particular parameter got changed now the 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 next part is the we have to rename this is very important rename the db2 server to db2 inst1 and then we have to add some dependencies and then once all of that is done your activity is done the next part is actually creating the database as you normally do and then testing the virtual ip or the failover cluster ip and then performing the failover so i will not talk about the part eight and part the part nine the last parts i will not talk about it it is completely optional if you want to test it this is only for the testing that our ha works so you, you might want to skip that particular part but i'll not talk about how to do that exactly right now when we do it you want to watch it you can continue watching it so now let's get on to our tutorial and let's start with our steps so what i've done as i told you on the node one so i logged in on the node one and if i here you can see i have already on the node one this is the domain controller so you can see what i'll do actually i'll change the font size of this a little bit bigger so that you can see so this is the this is the domain controller and what i'll do you know i'll also change the color of this let's see if i got any color okay so not this color so not definitely not this color cancel this properties i want to change the uh, i want to change the screen test and may probably i'll keep it green so this is the domain controller domain controller is in the green and here i have run if i say db2 licm minus l you can see I have installed db2 client so only on the node domain controller i have installed the db2 client this is done this is done for 
to save the time otherwise we have to and obviously you would know how to install a db2 client so there's nothing significant on that particular part so if you don't know how to install i have already recorded a video on how to set up the client you can always follow that particular video so db2 client is only installed on the domain controller that's all i have done on the, these are the two other nodes and here let me do something let me actually personal personalize this so that you know you can i'll change the color so probably i'll choose this as a green color so this is the node one and i'm going to node two and i'll change the background color of this to probably blue color so you know so that you when you understand when you see this background you will come to know whether i'm doing something in the node one otherwise everything will look same so this is node one this is node two and i'll also change let me okay that's fine so now what we will do so what what i have al already done is like i have created a domain account so if i go to if only thing that i have done apart from this is i have gone i have created if you go to the active directory and if you click on the domain and if you click on the users i have created one user called db2 admin i'll be using this particular user so what i'll do i'll go to the node one so this is my node one so if i open the command prompt and if i say host name and again i'll make this a little bit bigger so that you guys can see as i told you i have not done any of these changes so that you think you should not think that i have done anything so you can see here there is no ibm that is ibm db2 that is installed so this is this is a fresh node and what i'll do now is like i'll go to administrator tools and computer management so administrator tools computer management local users groups under administrator i will use that db2 admin as a administrator on this particular server so check name okay apply so that's done so i have added the db2 admin i have added so now under the on on the node one i have added the db2 admin i have to do whatever i do on the node one i have to do the it on the node two as well so same thing again so you there is another option also server manager if i go to server manager tools computer management and then i can click on local users groups administrators and here i can say db2 admin so i can choose this check names and that's done so i have added the db2 admin as the admin on node 1 and node 2 that's done now what i'll do is like i'll go to node 1 and the first thing that we need to do uh, as i mentioned the first part is actually we need to uh, install the db2 software so to install the db2 software what we need is what i have done is i have already copied the db2 software and extracted it i have not installed as you can see it has not been installed so now and you can verify it has not been installed so what i'll do is like this is 11.5.9 and i'll show you at a later point in time so i have to install db2 on node 1 and node 2 so whatever i do on node 1 exactly same thing i have to do on node 2 installation and this is exactly same installation no other difference except for one small change that when you install db2 make sure that the db2 service is running under the domain account so right now i am installing db2 software on node 1 so you can see this is the node 1 i'm installing that so now click on next i accept click on next custom click on next install yes next in the server edition i don't need guardian so whatever feature you don't need uncheck those features if you need them you can keep them i don't need those so i'm going to uncheck some of the feature click on next and this can be this is english i have selected english this can be default i'm going to click on next i'm not going to change anything click on next so i'm not if you see i'm not here is the main thing i was talking about when you install db2 you this is the domain so i've got this machine as part of domain called db.com and you can see that here so if you if i open the computer click on this click on the properties you can see this particular machine is win19 node1.db.com and this particular machine is what we are going to use so what i'll do now is like i will give the password of that domain account and you have to give the password of that this domain account db2 admin click on next create a default you have to you don't have a choice you have to create a default instance we are not going to use this instance but for some reason the db2 on windows always creates a we don't need to do this we don't need to do this click on next and click on finish and if you want to verify one time if everything looks good you can accept it and click on finish 
So the DB2 installation on node one has started. What I'm going to do now is exactly same I'm going to do on node two as well. So I'm going to go to the node two and I'm going to repeat exactly same steps. So let's go to node two. So here is the software which I've already extracted 11.5.9 and I'm going to click on this image, click on the setup, run this. So you can skip this particular part because whatever I have done in node one, I'm going to do this on the node two. So click on install new. Click on next. I accept. Click on next. Custom. Next. Again, you can go with typical. I I don't want to install things that I don't want. So DB2 update service and getting started first step. These are the things that I did not install on node one. So I'm keeping both of the installation exactly same. Again, you can choose those options or you can uncheck more options if you want it will just waste our time so this is default i'm not going to change anything on the ibm website click on next here is the main setting here i'm changing this to the db2 admin account caps lock is on my password is in small i'm using password as password by the way it's click on next password do not match somewhere i made a mistake so let's enter the password once again click on next create default click on next single partition install click on next default instance db2 click on next we are not going to use this particular instance as i mentioned setup i don't need this i don't need this verify that everything looks good click on finish so the db2 is getting installed on node 1 and the db2 is getting installed on node 2 so now what we are going to do is let's see the db2 is installed on node 1 so let's do this let's click on the finish now the next part is this we have done this particular part so we have run the db2 setup chose the domain account and we have to verify something so let's now the db2 is installed so what we will do is like i'll go launch this command prompt and I'll, I'll make this a little bit bigger so that you guys can see this clearly and i'll change the color of this probably um, what color i can choose so options colors probably uh, not not uh, not this cancel <clears throat> I want to change the color of the screen test so probably green on green so green on green and let's here we okay once the db2 is installed i'll change the color so now this is the node one green on green this is the node one the db2 is installed so db2 licm minus l it's a community edition 11.5 db2 level is 11.5.9 you can see it is 11.5.9 all good now what i'll do is what we need to do so remember green is node one and i'll change the color of this once it gets installed blue on blue so now what we are going to do it 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 actually doesn't it it is it is i think it won't look good you I, i'm i'm not liking it so what i'll do you know i'll just change it back to what it was because it really doesn't look good so yeah white that that looks good so uh, based on the background you will be able to see so now the we we have installed db2 so first thing that we need to do is we need to actually um before creating we need to do the db2 fall file so this particular option will allow us to create a cluster role so without this you cannot create a cluster role so you need to install that without that you will not be able to create a cluster role so what i'm going to do i'm going to run the command called and you can run this from any node and you have to run this only once you have to run this only once on any of the nodes so i'm going to do this and you can see db2 wolf i it's okay so the command has been completed successfully now let's verify yes the db2 is installed on the node 2 also if you want to check you can check uh, it's the same db2 so i'm going to again increase the properties font i'll make it a little bit bigger so that you guys can see properly and i'll change the color of this to this and the no that's that's not what i wanted to do properties uh, okay so that has to be yeah so now what i'll do is i'll change the screen text to this okay so now the this is the node 2 and on the node 2 also db2 licm minus l 
and DB2 level, you can see it is 11.5.9. So till now, till now we have just installed DB2 on both the nodes and I have ran only one single command called DB2 wall 5. Now we will go to the failover cluster. So to launch the failover cluster, you have to, you can go to server manager, tools, failover cluster manager. That is another shortcut called clue admin. So I'll say, don't show me this again. So we, we can use the command. We can go to altar. So we can say clue admin dot MSC. Uh, I think I made some mistake. Yeah, clue admin. So this is nothing but this will also launch the failover cluster manager. So you can type clue admin or you can type failover. You can go here and click on this failover cluster manager. Now you can see here that our server is part of the our server is actually part of the failover cluster. There are two nodes, node one and node two. And then there is a role. There is no role actually. There is absolutely no role. And storage, you can see there is the one disk which is already available to uh, uh, use by quorum and then there is another which is available storage this is the storage that we will use this is the shared storage so right now that particular storage is on node 2 so that particular storage is on node 2 so what i'll try to do is i'll try to see if i can move and now you can see that storage is on node 1 so what so basically we have an available storage this is the e drive so remember this is a e drive and this is a shared disk. This is the disk where we will store the instance configuration and the database files. And this, this roles, no role and nodes. There are two nodes in the cluster, node one, node two, both are Windows 2019. Now that we have seen how our cluster looks like, let's go ahead and create a shared directory. So we'll go to this E drive and we'll click on new, we'll click on this and we'll say shared e drive shared so we'll click on this e drive shared and what we will do is <clears throat> now that we have created this e drive shared we, what we will do is like we will uh, let me do one more thing let me not hide this okay so what we will do and i'll do the same thing on node 2 yeah so what we will do is like so we so this is under the shared folder so this this e drive is actually shared disk so right now the shared disk is on this particular e drive is on node 1 because the if you see here i said the data disk is on node 1 and if i go to the node 2 you will not be able to see that e drive so here you can you only c drive and this is the disk drive there is no e drive at all now what we will do is like we will come here and all that I have done is I have just installed this particular role and I have created a shared folder as of now, nothing else. The next part is actually creating a DB2 role. So for that, what we'll do, we'll go click on this roles and right click on it and say configure role, click on next and say other server, say other server, click on next this is your virtual this is your name of the so let's say db2 ha so this is or db2 vip so this let's say this is the db2 vip and this is your ip so i'll choose 210 probably so 192.168.1.210 is your virtual ip so this is the ip which will be used by the applications to connect to the db2 software and this IP will always point to the active node. Wherever the instance is running, this is your virtual IP. This is a floating IP. So it will always point to the node where your instance is running. The DB2 instance is running. Click on next. And you can see it has already chosen this data as a, because that data disk is actually available. So you can see it is available storage. So since that it is available, it has chosen that. So click on next. And here choose the DB2 server, click on next. And if everything looks good, if you are okay with all of the settings, so this is the IP, this is the DB2 server, this is storage. If you are all okay, click on next. And once you click on next, if I click on finish, you will see there is a new role that we have configured. The name of that role is DB2 VIP role. And here you can see that we got the storage and we got the IP address configured. Now. If I try to bring online, everything else will come online except for this particular role. 
or this resource and ignore that particular part ignore the this particular part that this particular resource is not coming online so now try to start the role and you can everything will come online except this particular part and it's all right it's absolutely all right ignore that particular failure so and we are going to fix it at a later point in time so for now you just ignore it now right click on again it has moved to node 2 so what we will do we will move this to node 1 and once it has moved to node 1 what we will do is like we will click on this role we'll click on the right click on the role and we'll say add file share so what we are going to do now in the background and okay for some reason it happens if you get this particular message then probably this particular server has lost the you have to you just have to restart your server so sometimes this happens where you know the the machine is not able to machine is not able to connect to the node so what you'll do is like you'll just check ping 192 that's the ip of the node one so let's see if it came online so it looks like it has not come online so give it a minute for it to get rebooted so once it is rebooted we will again rdp to that particular so it has started appearing so looks like it has come online so let's connect to that particular machine using remote rd this one and give the password which is password and we have connected so some sometimes it loses the trust so to fix that just restart your node so now we'll go to the failure cluster manager once again and under this roles and it's running on node 2 so let's move it to node 1 once again <clears throat> and then once it again it will be failing add file share and let's see if we if we can get past to that yes we got past to that error and now what we do is like you chose smb share quick so go with this particular option click on next and you see here it chose the e drive it chose the e drive because that's the storage that's the storage that we have assigned to the cluster so it has already chosen the e drive however we are going to say type a custom path click on browse and we are going to say shared select the folder i'm going to make it caps again you don't have to do this but i want to make sure everything is and this is the path so this you have to remember this particular path the to whip shared so this particular this will become the remote file shared server this will become the remote file shared server and this you can click on next next and click on create so with this what will happen is like a new file share and i'll make this a little bit bigger so new file server came and it is also online so now what we will do is like we need to actually this is the location where we need to mention that file share so this is this is the name and i'll tell you what so now now that we have we have we have um so what we have done till now so so let's go okay so we have installed the db2 all created a role so we created a role and we added a file share these are the three steps that we did and i'll show you the document so we have to run the db2 all then we have to create a folder and add a file share to db2 server so we have to create so install the db2 role add a role create a shared file system and add a file show so this is what we have done till now and you have to do this only on one node you have to do this only on one node any node you have to do this on any node now it's time to create the instance now it's time to create your instance so let's go to node one so let's go to node one and let's run let's launch the db2 command window and you will run this normal db2 i create command so this is the command db2 i create so you'll run this particular command to create your instance and i'll show you so db2 i create the enterprise server edition instance the domain account and the instance name this is the instance name this is the domain account this is the type of instance so i'm going to click enter and it's going to ask for the password and sometimes it does this and i'm going to enter the password and the instance got created now what we will do is we will verify that we have got two instances look at this so we have now two instances db2 inst1 and db2 and we don't need this instance we don't need this instance so what we can do is we can stop that instance and we can disable that instance so go to the services and click on properties and disable that 
and stop it. You can also do the Dimitri stop, but I'm stopping from here. So that's done. So this one, we are not going to touch anything. So this is the instance that we have created. We have stopped this and we have disabled it. And this is the instance that we just created. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the next command, which is migrating this particular instance to the shared cluster system. So to do that, I'm going to run this particular command and I'll explain what this command does while I run this. So okay. So DB2 I class migrate name of the instance I, which node. So this is node one shared file system that we created. So DB2 whip and under that whip we got shared. So DB2 whip shared and then the domain account. So this is the user. So this is the shared file system. This is the node. This is the instance. Migrate this particular instance. Migrate this particular instance. This particular instance to a clustered instance. This is what this particular command is going to do. So now I'm going to ent enter and I'm going to enter the password. And the cluster command was successful. Now if you if you just note this and if I run the DB2 iList once again, see the way you can see the DB2 iList1 now shows that it is a clustered instance, Win19 node 1. It shows that it is a clustered instance. So we have successfully migrated this instance as a clustered instance. And you want to see something more? I'll show you. So under this shared location, automatically you can see the DB2 iList1 folder has appeared. So this this particular folder has appeared under the sad file system. Now what we have to do and I'll go to node 2 now and if I I told you that there is no E drive on node 2. So what I'll do now I'll launch the failover cluster manager because we need to do something on the node 2. So I'll go to the failover cluster manager here on node 2. I'll say do not show me this again and minimize this. Uh, and minimize this and if I go to the rows and what I'll do it is right now running on node 1 I'll say move this to node 2 and automatically e drive has appeared here so now e drive has appeared here along with the shared file system where the db2 now what we need to do is we need to now so I'm going to say db2 i list and you can see that there is only default instance which we are not going to use so there is only one default instance which we are not going to use. So what I will do is like I'll actually stop it and disable that instance because we are not going to use that. So let's do that. And if you if you want to use that instance, you can keep it. There is no harm, but I don't I don't I'm not going to use it. So I'm going to stop it and disable it. So now what we are going to do, we are not going to create an instance here. We are going to actually add that instance into the it add the second node as a cluster instance. So this is what we are going to do on the second node. So he, on the first node, we said migrate. On the second node, we are going to say add. Rest of the command exactly looks same. So db2 i class add, db2 i class add, instance name, this time on node two. So we are doing this on node two. This is the location of shared file system, user. This is the domain account. So let's click on, let's click on the, enter and enter the password of domain account and the cluster command was successful. Now, if I run the db2 ilist command, see the difference here. There was only one instance. Now you can see if I run this particular command, you should be able to see that we got the db2 ilist1. We never created this instance on node 2. Remember, we never created this instance on node 2. So now if I go to the payload cluster, if I go to the services, so if I go to the services and if I refresh if I refresh the services, so previously there was only one instance called db2.0. Now if I refresh this, you can see there is another instance that appeared. This is this is not created by db2 i create. This is actually created using the db2 i plus add command. At this moment, your work is actually done. You have done everything. There are minor things, but most of the th things are done. So what we are going to do, hold on, stick to me and follow the next tutorial. So what we are going to do now is you can see that it is still in the failed mode. So what we are going to do is what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to change some configuration parameters. So let's try 
to actually bring so you know it is so let's actually do some okay so that is your default instance so now let's set up the db2 instance as db2 inst1 and let's say db2 start and let's see if it comes online and what we are going to do so it came online what we are going to do we are going to update some particular parameter so we are going to we are going to change we are going to ch set so i'm going to clear the screen so i'm under the i'm under the the i'm under db2 this one and i'm i'm going to change this parameter so stop and start and what i'm going to do just for safety is once everything is done i'm just going to reboot the machines one time so i'm going to just reboot so once instance configuration and everything is done i'm going to just reboot both the machines one at a time so i'm going to i'm going to reboot the node one and node two so i'm going to reboot the node one first and i'm also going to reboot the node two and i'm going to verify if they are reachable so let's say it's still not reachable so wait for it to come online once it, it comes online i'll connect to it so yeah it came online and let's see about the node 2 not reachable node 2 was restarted afterwards so probably it will take few more yeah that's also came online so now let's connect to node 1 give the password so i'm connected to node 1 and also connect to node 2 yeah that's all good so now what we'll do is <coughs> we'll go to the failure cluster manager once again so tools failure cluster manager and let's see where is so our role is now on node 1 because node 1 came online first what we are going to do is you can see this is still in the failed state so what we are going to do is we are going to change the name of this to the name of the service so what is the name of the db2 service so if i go to if i go to the services and if i click on the inst1 this is the name of the service so i'm going to use this name and i'm going to put it here and i'm going to click on apply and if if everything that we have done till now is all good then it should come online so let's see and if and you can see it has come online and our role has started which means we have it the success now do, we, now we have to add some dependencies and i'll tell you why because the the db2 database should not come online unless there is a file share and the storage and the vip so the 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 db2 database should come online when all of these resources has come so what i'll what i've done is i clicked on this other resources clicked on this click on the properties click on the dependencies and I, i'm going to add the storage i'm going to add the file server and i'm going to add the vip as the dependencies so unless until all of these dependencies are not met the instance should not come online and just for safety we will see if it fails over to the second node as well so let's go to the second node and let's see if it fails over to the second node online pending and it is fading over so instance can run on node 1 instance can run on node 2 as well so that's all good so let's go back to node 1 and now what we will do and i could have done that on node 2 as well but i have already logged into node 1 so i thought of doing it on node 1 so let's do so what we'll do now is here under the shared file system let's actually verify something so let's launch the db2 command window and what we will do is we will set the instance name db2 instance is equal to db2 inst1 terminate it verify that we have connected to the correct instance db2 pd and you can see that instance is started now let's verify let's actually attach to the we don't have to attach because we have uh, you know we will just say get dbm config and find str default 
and you can see default DB path is E drive. This is our shared file system. So you can see this is our shared file system. So that looks good. And let's actually see the service name. I set the service name to 6001 and you can see 6001. So whatever changes I've made that are reflected good. So that's all good. So now it's time to hit and create our database. So to create our database, use your normal command, create database tests. So I'm going to create a database called test and this particular database is right now getting created. So I can show it to you. What I'll do is like I will open another command window, set the instance as db2 inht1 and db2 diag minus f and you can see db2 system cats views created so the database is getting created while the database okay so i can pause the video and come back but let's not do that so it should get created in maybe one two three four five six seven eight nine ten oh it has taken a longer time i i really do not know okay let's count again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten i really thought that by the time i finish counting to 10 it would have been done but looks like it is still doing something in the background my, and my database is not at created so should i pause the video or not because i know by the time i pause the video it will be done so i i, I really do not like to waste your time so let's do something let's pause the video and as i always do this Every time I pause the video, within few minutes, the database gets created. So the database is created and you can see create database test. Then what we are going to do is we are going to activate this particular database. Activate database test. And then what we are going to do, we are going to validate db2pd minus db test minus table spaces. And all of these table spaces should be on the E drive. And this is your shared file system and right now that e drive is on the node one which means that if i make a connection to this particular instance my connection will come to node one because the owner is node one and this is the part that i was talking so at this moment you have set up your failure cluster you have created your database and we have already seen that instance fails over between node one and node two successfully so we have seen all of that scenarios but and if you want to, if you want to stop the video and go ahead and do this in your lab, go ahead. You don't have to watch the next part. But if you want to see in reality how it works and how what to use to connect to this, stick on. But again, it's not mandatory. So let, let's continue. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the node domain controller. And this is where I have installed the client. So from the client, I'm going to make a connection. And when I make a connection, I need to give this particular virtual IP. So let's do something. Let's create a, let's create the, the catalog entry. So what we will catalog the node, we'll catalog the database. We will then connect to that particular database from here, from our domain controller. So let's do that. So let's clean this and clear this. So I'm going to catalog the node, catalog the database. So I've cataloged the node. This is the VIP at this particular port, which we have already set. Then catalog the database, the terminate, verify the node directory. And now I'm going to connect to the database. And you can see I've already connected. And now if I, if I go to the node one, if I go to the node one, and if I say DB2, so if this is node one, so if I say host name, and so let me clean the screen host name and db2 list applications you can see that there is a connection which is coming from 109 and this is nothing but your domain controller where i have set up the client so you can see win19 domain controller pinging to 192.168.109 and this is the connection which is coming from there and what I can also show you is like I can go to this domain controller and I can run one more query which will actually tell me 
that which node and what is the version of database I'm connected to. So I'm going to run this particular command on the domain controller. So let's do that. And you can see that right now I'm connected to node one. Right now I'm connected to node one and it is a Windows 32. It's on Windows 32 OS version 10. So I've connected to node one. Now what I'll do is like I will fail over. So if for some reason you want to reboot this particular machine, you want to fail over this particular role or instance. So let's say click on move, select node and we'll move it to node two. I'm doing that. So give it a minute for it to appear on node two. The drive will disappear from here. It will, the drive will go to node two because the instance is right now and looks like everything came online. So now what I'll do, I'll go to the domain controller and our connection would have been broken. So let's try to reconnect. So I'm, I don't want to, you know, try to run the query because it has already broken. Uh, so I'm going to reconnect because I want to keep this here on the same screen. So I'm going to reconnect. And once I'm reconnected, I'm going to run the same query again, which will tell me where I'm connected to. So you can see that now using the same database, everything same, no changes here, I'm connected to node two. So my connection has gone from node one to node two. So now my database is running on node two. So if for some reason, one of the host, which is participating in the cluster is gone down, something happens, the instance, you can move over the instance to the second node. Now here, this was a graceful failover, which where we, I manually initiated the failover. But what happens, what happens if, so right now the database is running on node two. What happens if this node is shut down, if this node is crashed? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just say shut down this particular node. So I'm going to shut down this particular node. So let's see if it, it really shut down. So let's say this one and it's still, it's still up. So give it a minute. So what will happen then once it is shut down, the automatically the instance will fail over because it has identified that it has shut down, it will fail over from there to node one. And you can you can just remove the power cord of the machine is dis destroyed, it will automatically fail over. So now if I go to the node one a domain controller again, and if I try to connect, if I try to connect, and if I run the query, which shows me then you can see from node two, I moved to node one. So we did the manual failover, and we also shut down the node to see that automatically the instance is moving from active node to passive node. So this was the tutorial on how to set up. This was the tutorial on how to set up the DB2 11.5.9 using Microsoft Windows 2019 failure cluster on VMware Workstation. I used only three softwares to do this. One was the VMware Workstation Pro 17, Windows 2019 evaluation version, DB2 11.5.9 developer edition. These are the only three softwares that were used. And this was actually by far one of the most easy setup to do. Install DB2 as you normally do. Add a role, create, create a role, add a DB2 resource, create a role, create a shared file system, uh, create an instance, migrate the instance to the cluster, move, add the second node to the cluster instance, update some parameters, create the database and rename the DB2 server as the service name of that. And with that, we were able to have our, we were able to set up our HA on DB2 HA on Microsoft Windows 2019 using VMware Workstation Pro. Thank you for watching this particular tutorial. If you like this particular tutorial, please do hit the subscribe button and do like my channel. Thank you and see you in next tutorial. Bye bye.